Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F16C and we're going to have a look at the features added to the HSD over the last couple of years. It's really impossible to do a single video that covers all of the functions of a certain feature like the HSD because stuff is constantly being added to it year on year. The previous time we looked at the HSD was all the way back here, late 2019, four years ago. It was a very small video at the time because it had almost no functionality. Functions have been added in month after month after month and so this video is a renewed reminder of what the HSD is for and a look at all the new functions that have been added in in the last four years. We're going to cover quite a few things. First we'll have a rough look at the HSD just to remind ourselves of the basic features and symbology. Then we'll start on the new features. PDLT HSD expand mode, steer point selection, fire control radar coupling, data link transmit options, friendly filters, bullseye as well as bullseye manipulation and radar cursor, upcoming freeze function and a quick look at HAD expand mode. First a look at controls just a reminder so that all skill levels are catered for. Display management switch down will allow us to choose which screen we have a soy sensor of interest the left or the right. Target management switch up and down to designate or undesignate our PDLT and it will have other functions too. Radar cursor switch up, down left and right or the equivalent axis to slew our cursors about and off the top of the screen there our expand field of view button for various levels of expansion. So first let's just remind ourselves about the HSD. Most of you will probably want to skip this so from our main menu on our right screen HSD. Our own ship is there Currently we're in depressed mode so the screen is looking ahead of us. If we want to centre us, go to centre mode and we're in the middle. We're looking up there. Range from me to the top of the screen is 60 nautical miles or we can change it there. We have range rings that are dynamic to the selected range. This blue cone here shows the current extent of the view of our fire control radar. We can see aircraft moving about blue ones here with a number in the middle are our flight members, flight members 2, 3 and 4 and it shows the altitude below them as a number. Green shows a friendly, also shows the direction of movement at 27,000 feet but is not part of my flight. We also have a series of hostiles here, the red ones are shown coming through the data link but I cannot see them on my own radar. The yellow ones I can see on my own radar and they are coming through my own radar and it will constantly change what I can see and what I cannot see, bearing in mind whether my radar can see them or not and obviously we can see their direction and altitude. Uh, Sams, this circle here with the 6 in the middle is showing that there is an SA6 at that location. The size of the circle shows the pre-planned threat and lethal range. It's important to understand that at the moment, 2023, the symbologies are automatically added in from the mission editor. When we start the mission up, they are added automatically. In the future, that will change when a data card is introduced into the F-16. It will have to be done differently, but for the time being, it's all automatic. Note that we're outside of the ring at the moment, so it's yellow. If we were to fly into it, it will become red because it becomes a lethality ring for obvious reasons. Finally, we have steer points and our flight path. Steer point 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. That one is selected and that is our flight path joining it up. And that is a very quick reminder of our HSD. So let's look at the things that have been added in the last few years. I think just to give myself more time, we'll restart the mission. Right, let's start with primary data link track, a really useful feature for situational awareness. To get the full out of it, we want to turn on our HMD Hemex there. We want to make our HSD soy. To do that, press DMS down until we get the box around it. It's now soy. We can move our cursor with the radar cursor switch as we saw. We now need to select a data link track. So some of these bad guys or some of these good guys. Let's get wingman 2. Let's zoom in. There he is. Move my cursor to him and press TMS up or forward. He now gets an octagon around him. That's cool because if I wanted to find him visually, my HUD would now show a dotted line pointing to him. And my HMD does the same and I can see him and I can now see him as an octagon. If he were on my fire control radar, which he's not, he would also show as an octagon, which is super useful. In fact, let's go and try getting a bad guy. It doesn't have to be a friendly, it can be a bad guy as well. So TMS 
down or off to undesignate. Let's zoom out, find one of these guys here, zoom in to one of those guys. I want to get that guy there. So TMS up. I'm just going to pause it there. Uh, so he now has the octagon and I will see in the HUD and HMD the same symbology that we saw before. And hopefully, yep, we can see now on the fire control radar. He also show as an octagon a really easy way of finding a certain data link track and or target. Uh, we have another function as well if I unpause. If I were to press TMS right, it will start cycling through, if I unexpand, other data link tracks and it's kind of hard to see so it's got that guy there next that guy there next that guy there next that guy there and it goes in order of distance from me uh simba's a bit more experienced of the use of tdlt in missions can you explain a use case for this please simba if you want to find a tanker and you see it on your data link and you're trying to visually pre-set up your intercept it's good for for that uh it's good for if you are in a fight situation where you have bandits that are like 40 degrees apart off your nose and you're gonna go okay i'm gonna go attack the bandits on the right but i don't necessarily want to lose full situational awareness of the bandits that are going to be off to my other side then you'll always be able to kind of look and have a general idea of where they are. Next feature, the HST expand mode, which we just showed accidentally. So let's just go here. Um, if I want to look at these guys a little bit closer because they're all clumped together, obviously I move my cursor to one of them there. I press this button and I can zoom in once or twice or back. And when you're zoomed in, you can obviously manipulate the targets at your will. If you don't want to press that, you can press the field of view button that we looked at earlier, and that will do the same job. And one more function is we can press and hold the field of view button. After a second or so, it will zoom in around us five times. And that's a little feature just to show our wingmen around us. Let go, and it disappears. Next, a very simple one, we can use our cursor to select a steer point, as well as the other ways we have selecting a steer point. We can now move our cursor to a steer point, TMS up, forward, we've now selected that steer point. Next, we can now couple the HSD zoom level to our fire control radar. So let me zoom out here. Let's get our fire control radar up on the left screen there. Let's just zoom to there maybe. Right, so currently the HSD is not coupled with the fire control radar. If we want to couple it, we can go like that. And now watch what happens if I zoom in and out on the fire control radar. If I'm in depressed mode here, it will be 1.5 times that the zoom of the radar. And if I'm in centered, it will be the same zoom as the fire control radar. And uncouple. Next is the transmit button and this works a little differently to how it used to when we first made the original video. If we want to manually transmit speed, that sensor point of interest or target information over the data link or transmit TDOA, so that is seed harm information over the data link, where do we want to transmit it to? To nothing or to TNDL, that's DCS's equivalent of link 16 data link or SMDL, which is currently not functional. Next, let's go to the friendly filter. What level of friendlies do I want to show on the screen? Currently on, all friendlies shown. Press once, only flight members are shown. Press twice, all friendlies are now off. And put them all back on. Next is relevant to that piece of information there, that piece of information there. This one here, as standard, shows the bearing and distance from the selected steer point to our HSD cursor there. Let me just zoom out. So we have that steer point selected. And if I were to move my cursor around, you can see that from that steer point there to my cursor is 195 for 18. This guy down here shows the bearing and range from the same steer point to the air-to-air -air ghost cursor, which is that thing there. That is the cursor on my radar screen. So if I were to press DMS down and soy to my left screen and now move my cursor about, you can see it move on the HSD there. And now from that steer point to that air to air cursor is 175 for 48 miles. But what if I want to reference from bullseye instead of a steer point? Well, I can do that. I can go up here and press list zero for misc, eight for bullseye.
Bullseye, as it stands, is automatically populated from Mission Editor. It's this guy up here, that symbol there, placed in the Mission Editor. And it will automatically populate Steer Point 25. So currently it's saying Bullseye, Steer Point 25, which is that sign we saw up to the north. As standard, it's not enabled. If I want to enable it with the asterisks up here, I press M Select 0. It's now enabled. Look at the change in numbers. So now from the bullseye up in the north to me is 99 or more nautical miles for a bearing of 184. So that's to me. From bullseye to my ghost cursor is 199 degrees for 124 nautical miles. And if I were to make the screen soy again with DMS down and move my cursor about from bullseye to my cursor here is 164 degrees for 151 nautical miles. But that's not all. I can now move bullseye to one of my other steer points. Let's say I want to put it here on steer point three. Well, back to the ICP, I will dobber down once. I will type in three, enter, and you can see I've now moved bullseye to steer point three, and all of these references are now from bullseye, which are also at steer point three. Finally, if I dobber back up and put the asterisks up at the top and M select zero to disable bullseye, we're now back to steer point. So all references are to steer point two there. Next is a difficult feature to show because I don't have it yet. It's actually coming in a couple of weeks time, but it will be the freeze feature and it's pretty easy to explain. If I just focus on the HSD again. With SOI assigned to this screen, which it is because the white box is there, we have freeze function. If you have the screen as SOI and you were to press it, then it will freeze this screen centered on wherever I have the cursor. So it will center the screen to the cursor there and freeze the screen. It will stay frozen until you press it again and unfreeze it. If this screen was not SOI, it would do the same, but it would center on me on the own ship. One thing to note is that when you have the screen frozen, it will disable steer point and expand functions. Uh, that just leaves us with a HAD, which is super simple. So if I were on this screen to go to uh, HAD, and I've got lots of SAMs over here that I want a closer look at, then I can make the screen soy. I can move the cursor over here. And yep, you guessed it. I can zoom in and manipulate them. And finally, let's have a look at the control filters. So uh, if I want to filter certain graphical elements out of the HSD, I could go to control. I have two pages worth of stuff and I can turn certain stuff off. Simple as that. Only about 50% of this stuff is modeled at the moment in DCS and we're not sure how much is going to be added, but that's basically how it works. Messaging is not implemented and that is an update of the last four years of additions to the HSD. We covered PDLT, HSD Expand, Steer Point Selection, Fire Control Radar Coupling, Transmit Options, Hello F-16, uh, Friendly Filters, Bullseye, Bullseye Manipulation and Radar Cursor and Air-to-Air -air Radar Cursor, the upcoming Freeze function and the HAD Expand function. I hope that was useful and bye-bye.